I'm a computer scientist, a misinformation researcher, an academic, but I've also been dead for the past three years, according to ChatGPT. <laughs> you must have heard about ChatGPT. It is an example of a large language model. Large language models are a class of artificial intelligence. We also call them LLMs, which are used to generate and process human language. It has been pretty useful. We can get personalized recommendations. We can get instant information. We can also get indulged in conversation. It has made us believe that it can help us navigate the complicated world of digital information. And that's where we get blindsided. AI-driven decisions have a dark side as well. There is always this possibility that somebody can use our data for nefarious purposes. And users may not know what's happening with their data. Bad actors can use that data for scamming purposes, or can create disinformation to cause harm. So the question today is, will we be able to combat disinformation in this new era of AI? Let's see how do these models work. LLMs are trained on a large amount of data. You can compare them with children. It is expected that responsible individuals, such as their parents, are going to train them. As those little minds grow up, they form neurological connections and use the knowledge that they have gained in the past to extrapolate it and apply it in situations uh, which are probably unseen situations, and then they use that knowledge to make decisions. LLMs are also trained on large amount of data. But guess what? Sometimes that data is inaccurate, or unfiltered, or even biased. As a result, these models have the potential to make wrong decisions. And even if these models are trained on accurate data, sometimes that data is so large that the models get confused, and they start hallucinating. Probably this is what happened when I asked ChatGPT about myself, and it thought that I was dead. If there are so many problems with these models, then why do we believe them? Well, there's a little problem with the human psychology. Whenever a system shows even a hint of linguistic ability, we start associating intelligence with that system and we start trusting that system. Since ChatGPT talks to us just like us, we think it's very intelligent. Language models look at the statistical trends in the data, and then they make predictions or give you the answers. If malicious actors get hold of those models, they can tweak the output and still go undetected. You can call it disinformation. It's put on social media, there is a high chance that it would spread and change reality for a number of people. How do people influence each other on social media? We can actually mathematically model that. There is a very simple model, and it's my favorite model, that only looks at how uncertain you are about your choices. An example. A number of you would have smartphones. Some of you must be sure about the choice that you have made. But then some of you might have doubts about your phone. Let's say you have an iPhone, and you are reasonably certain about your choice. But it so happens that you start interacting with people who own Android phones. And they start pursuing you 
to change your phone. They tell you how bad your phone is and how good their phone is. And when you keep interacting with those people, and also given that those people are way more certain about their choice than you are, you would get influenced. And you might change your opinion and then switch to an Android phone. So back in 2019 and 2020, in Australia, we had unprecedented bushfires. We collected some data on social media and we found out that there were two polarized communities on social media. There was one group of people who were just discussing that arson was the cause of bushfires, and then there was another group of people who talked about the fact that climate change was the cause of bushfires. And the two communities barely interacted with each other. As a result, the opinions in those two communities kept getting reinforced, even if some of those opinions were misinformed. So now the question is, can we combat it? Well, we all need to believe that humans are very powerful. Even if AI has the potential to generate a plethora of misinformation, it is us humans who share that information. We conducted a psychological study using a gaming simulator, and we found out that participants who were hasty in sharing messages and those who were driven by emotions, they ended up sharing a lot more misinformation than people who paused, pondered, and looked at fact-checking websites before sharing the messages. All of us can act as dead ends when it comes to sharing misinformation on social media. We need to encourage healthy debates among different communities on social media. And we can be the people who can stop the spread of misinformation. A couple of years ago, Australian government introduced an AI technology called Robodet. Unfortunately, it sent wrong notices to a number of people, which caused a lot of financial and mental stress. Had there been humans in the loop, and had there been regulations, that may not have had happened. So we need to encourage governments to speak to platform owners and those who create AI technologies to regulate them. Although I am a misinformation researcher working at the edge of AI and social sciences, I do not have a perfect solution to the problem of misinformation on social media in this era of AI. But when we are using AI technologies, we need to be mindful. We need to be careful when we are trusting the algorithms. We should not believe whatever we read or hear on social media, because AI sometimes lies as well. And perhaps you should not believe me as well. Because after all, I'm already dead, according to ChatGPT. <laughs> Thank you.